My video about the white flies was made from video that I recorded at the end of August. Right now it's the beginning of April and there are some slightly different creatures on the lemon leaves. One of them is extremely flat and almost transparent. It looks like a blemish on the leaf, but since it has a thickness, it has a visible boundary. They are easy to peel off the leaf, but they seem to have a hair clinging to the leaf, perhaps a feeding tube. I suppose they suck juice from the leaf. They even have a texture that resembles that of the leaf. Here are three of them. The middle is upside down. Two of them have brown spots along their edge that appear to be something like mold. It looks like they have a backbone running down the center. Here they are on a black foam background. They also have a circular spot near what looks like a tail. Their green color makes me wonder if they have chlorophyll inside them. Here is one on the leaf and the light is shining from the side which makes it easier to see what looks like a backbone. This dark gray bug is completely consumed by mold. I don't know what that thing next to it is. Although a few of the flat bugs appear dead, there are a lot more that turned into empty white shells. Most of them have a hole in the center, as if something hatched out of them. Nothing is living on the dead gray bugs, but the empty shells have bugs inside and underneath, such as this one. Here is a different view of that empty shell and the bugs around it. Each of those little bugs molts once in a while, and their empty skins are scattered around the area. I don't know if those tiny bugs hatched from inside that flat bug, or if some parasitic fly laid eggs on the flat bug, and these are its babies that consumed it. Or maybe the tiny bugs are just using the empty shell as a hiding space. As I move this empty shell, you can see bugs and their molted skin underneath. Maybe at least some of these white discs were originally sacks of eggs. The hole that is in the center of these empty shells looks as if it has been pushed open from the inside. And inside many of the shells are tiny little bugs and their little skins. There are also some areas with lots of little bugs and their molted skin, but no empty shell. Here is one in the process of molting. These bugs don't seem to produce any type of hairs or fuzz to camouflage themselves. Their defense mechanism seems to be to hide near other objects or near other bugs. I decided to pick another leaf from the lemon tree in the hope that maybe I could find one of these flat bugs in the process of hatching or whatever it does. I was in luck because I found this creature. Apparently this flat bug turns into an insect, which then climbs out of its shell, but this one died halfway out. This one is dehydrating. Here is a view looking into its face. Its eyes are shriveled rather than round. Its legs are outside of the shell, but its tail is still inside. It doesn't seem to have wings. At its tail is a round dot and a V-shape in the shell. It looks like the tail of the flat bug. I found some insects on the leaf that resemble that bug. So maybe these are what hatch out of those flat bugs. Perhaps these later turn into flies. 
The long neck of this insect resembles the backbone of that flat bug. As the antenna come into focus, you can see that they are hairy. Two rows of white dots along its back are pulsating, apparently from its heartbeat. I found this fly on the lemon leaf. It has clear wings and a yellow body. It doesn't look like a white fly unless it's at the beginning stage before it has turned white. Or is this the creature that lays the eggs that become the flat bugs? I looked around the leaf some more and found yet another style of fly. Or is this a newly hatched white fly that hasn't yet turned white? Instead of flying away, it crawled onto my finger and either laid an egg or pooped. It may be laying eggs because I found a couple tiny eggs on the leaf and some yellow spheres on silk threads. Finally, I found some red versions of those clear bugs. This one seems to be tasting everything that it encounters. You don't have to travel to another planet to find strange creatures. All you have to do is look around your house and yard. Why not let high school students get some practice with scientific research by studying some of the creatures around us?